Hello, it's Martin from RC Bits. Um, video 7 now of the Honcho SCX10 build um, by Axel. Um, today we're going to put um, the chassis together which really is opening bag F and there's many components in bag F and you'll also see that we've had to open the plastic bag too and that's really to get the front and back sections for the chassis. I've laid out all the bits and um, just be careful there's two sets of screws really that we're using here one that's got like a mushroom head on um, and one that's got a countersunk head um, so just make sure that we get those in the right place and the right way around. Generally you'll see that the items that the um, countersunk's got to go in have got a countersunk uh, recess. Some of the parts have got both a mounting point and a little dimple if you like um, that'll go into a recess on these plates. So I'll just show you on here. When you screw that in little dimple you see comes through the hole. Now, the easiest way to build this chassis because you know there's a lot of screws and a lot of parts to go together is to work your way down one side and I would just fix these plastic parts first and then fix the transmission. The transmission and its housing is you know quite heavy so that makes it um, more cumbersome to do. And just note make sure to get these um, hoops for the shocks um, in the right way round and just check that all of these components are obviously the right way up. I've not laid out the screws and the mountings for the LEDs, but I will put LEDs in that, um, but I'll show that at a, at a later stage. So I'll go ahead now and just put together this near side and then come back and show you what that looks like. See you in a minute. I've just zoomed in a bit so I can show you mounting the transmission plate to the chassis. Um, so if you stand on its side, you'll find that the pins on there will register in those holes and then you can just offer up the two screws and wind those in. As we've said before, just be conscious that you're screwing into plastic and you don't want to strip the threads. Let's just show you where we're up to. As you can now see, we've completed one side. All the supports, both the suspension hoops for the shocks, the cross members and then the front and back of the chassis are all done. What I'll do now is I'll turn it all round and then show you assembling at the second side. You'll find mounting the second side much easier. Um, and if you start at one end and get it fixed, you can then line up all the other parts I just wind that down. Check then that the cross members are in. Check the little pins on the transmission mounting are coming through as they should. And check the next plate cross members in place. And then finally, a little pin in the back. And then wind that screw in. Once you've done the two ends, that makes it much, much easier to do the remaining ones. I'll just wind that up quickly. And now everything's lined up and it's very easy just to then go through and put the screws on the shock hoops. Um, the only difference on the transmission housing this side is that there are some um, little clips where when we finish the build some of our wires can go down in there to make it a nice neat job. Um, so that's quite handy. And there is a spare one. You just wind on there. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish that part of the transmission and then we'll start bringing the axles together and show you mounting them and the shocks to this chassis. Now steps 33 and 34 are actually very fiddly to do. Um, you'll see here that I've actually mounted the front axles um, and all the suspension links and also the drive shaft. And I just want to give you some tips. You'll also notice that I've got the chassis upside down. Um, sounds crazy, it's not what's in the manual, but I've always found it much easier to link everything up like that. Um, there are two bolts that you really want to start winding in. If you look at this side of the chassis, you can see that I've actually partly wound this one in, so it's just poking through. And then this one, you actually want to wind it in. It's on the mounting for the rock slider, so you won't have that on the CF100 kit. You need about 4 mil through the other side. So if I go ahead and do that on this side, so the smaller bolt 
goes in what would be the bottom of the track. So it's just poking through. And the longer the bolts you then have to put through, mounting for the rock slider, through this hole. And you want a good sort of four to five mil poking through this side. When you've done that, we're actually going to take half the drive shaft because the telescopic off, and that'll just give you less bits of material to work around. So all you have to do is just slide that off and we'll put that back a bit later. So all your suspension arms need to go through the middle of the chassis and the shocks on the outside. And the Y piece, we then just need to hook both of those up on those bolts that go through the rock sliders that we put about four mil through. Um, if you feel they're a little bit um, precarious and they might come out, again, just pop another few turns on so that it's pushing right through the eyelet and then you should be much more secure. My preference would be um, to put those nuts on now. So what I'm going to do is just wind enough through so that with my fingers I can just spin on a couple of turns on those. Same on the other side. Spin a couple of turns on. Now with your tool that's supplied just catch that nut and tighten those up. When you do this, you need to just make sure that the rock slider at the end finishes about there. No need to over tighten. The nylon nuts really do do the job on here and stop them falling off. I'll go ahead and tighten up the other side and come back and put the bottom links on. So for the bottom links, they need to go up in these grooves in the transmission plate. You can see there I've just wound a little bit too much on. And I'll drop inside and then you can just tighten those up. And the other one will go in the other side and again a few turns will just secure it. I'll tighten both those up and then we'll come back to fitting the drive shaft. So to mount the drive shaft, just turn the chassis back over, so it's the right way up. And then this part of the drive shaft, you just need to put the telescopic bit back on. You just rotate it round, you'll find where it fits. Now what we're aiming to do, is you'll see there's a small hole in here where the grub screw's going to go. We need to marry that up on this flat face on the drive shaft. If that flat face isn't easily accessible, if you just rotate that spur gear, it'll turn that round until you can see it. I'll just zoom in and show you that. Here's the hole, and you can see the flat face that we're going to marry it up to. So what we need to do is push out that drive shaft, hold it in place. I've got my grub screw with a bit of Loctite on. And go in the hole. and then just tighten that down. As before, no need to be too tight because the um, lock tight will do its thing when it's gone off. And that then should be nice and secure. When mounting the shocks to the shock hoops, we need to make sure on our specific kits that we're going to get the, um, the mount in the right holes. You can see there are three different holes on each hoop where they could be mounted. Um, as we're doing the honcho, um, the front ones need to go in the middle and the rear ones need to go at the back. Um, just check on each that the little um, part that's in the eyelet um, is actually the right way around. The big flat side should be against the hoop. Um, so when you're putting it together it needs to travel through that eyelet. There's then a little aluminium space that goes on the back and then you mount it into the shock hoop. So this is the front one on a honcho and it needs to go in the middle. And let's tighten that down, not too tight, just enough to bite up. Okay, I'll zoom in and just show you the back one a bit closer up and that'll hopefully help. So you can see here, this eyelet, it's got the wide side, which is what's going to go against the shock hoop. So pop a screw through. And you need the I mean spacer. So we say honcho, so it goes in the back hole. 
then just wind that up. So the gap's closed and fairly tight against. There we go. The final parts I'm going to show you in this video uh, mounting the two rock sliders to the chassis and then just the radio box. You can see again I have the chassis upside down and on the rock sliders there are actually a series of small holes and you can choose how far out from the chassis you want to mount these. I'm going to mount them right the way in. There's some sort of extended grub screws if you just push them through and then with your one and a half they just need tightening down. Just that the grub screws flush with the plastic and will have come through the other side of the rock slider mounting. I'll zoom in and just show you the other side. So once again, just push your rock slider into its mountings and the small grub screws just drop down each hole. If you find like this one that it doesn't go down, just wiggle the rock slider, it'll find the hole and then you can just wind those down flush. And for the radio box in the manual, it references an 8mm screw. However, if you try and offer up the screws that are allocated for it, you'll find that they don't match the picture. Um, and it looks like they've just put the wrong um, scale picture in the manual, um, so just be aware of that. OK, let's show you the radio box. The radio box and its cover can be quite fiddly to get the cover on. There's this little notch or pin rather in the front and you just need to slide that up under there with the case about a few degrees up. Once you get that up it then should sit down and get a nice flush and then for taking it off the same lift that edge up and that will come out. But do you locate with that front bit, wiggle it and it will go down. But on the chassis there are some very small um, pieces that offer up into the C section in some small holes. I've always found this much easier to actually mount these onto the radio box, just gently, don't tighten them up, and then we'll mount it on the chassis. So if I do that, and I'll just show you. So you need a 2mm driver for this. So what you need to do is pop it through the hole on the bottom of the radio box. And that's going to mount a little pin facing outwards. So just wind them on. Oops. So they're a little bit loose. Same on the other side. Pin facing outwards. Just a few turns so they're loose. Now if I bring the chassis back. Now you'll find that if you face those two pins outwards, the radio box will drop in at the front. You'll find it easier at this point just to wind one of the screws into one of the holes at the back for mounting this radio box, just to stop it moving around too much. Now you better locate those. When they're in place, go back in and just tighten down the screws. The same on the other side. And the next thing would be to mount the um, battery mounting, which on the Honcho is at the front and the CF100 kit is at the back. Um, but I'll go through in the next video and show you some of the soldering and wiring, because obviously we're at that point now we need to put the electronics in. Once the electronics in, we can put our cover on our radio box um, and then mount up the battery. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this video has been useful for you. Please do subscribe and give the thumbs up or thumbs down whether you think and this has been useful and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.